Minister, obviously the leadership is dominating and it can't be avoided. You've been floated as a possible third option again. Are you listening to those calls from within your party? I, I read them with interest. Would you consider such a move or even running no. as part of a ticket? No, no. Look, this is a situation in which the party needs to get its act together. That's the truth. The stalemate has to end. We have to get the people who are destabilising to stop and the party has to focus on the future. Today there are some important initiatives, the um, forced adoption people and the sorry to them. This is a great day in the history of this nation that we recognise the hurt that's been done to that people. We saw the significant um, response when the, um, so when the stolen generation had their apology. This is obviously just as significant for those people who have been, um, who were in the forced adoption situation. This is a great day for nation healing and that's why it's so frustrating to see the constancy of debate about something that's tearing at us from inside. Well, so, so how do you well, stop it? Yeah, how does By it a stop? vote? A meeting, must there be a vote? How do you stop the stalemate? I think you stop the stalemate by getting people to pull back, understand it's in our interests, to act in a more unified way and get on with the task of presenting ourselves as a united government with a pretty scary opposition behind Kevin Rudd or Julia Gillard. No, I think that the, the, the that decision was determined by the caucus. And it was determined numbers, on the last occasion. Numbers being counted, Mr. Crean, have you been canvassed? And if Kevin Rudd does have the numbers, shouldn't there be a spill? And shouldn't you return to him as Prime Minister? If Kevin had, Rudd had the numbers, they would have challenged. So Rudd supporters should pull back. That's what you say. So Julia Gillard should remain as Prime Minister? Julia Gillard is the Prime Minister. Should she remain as Prime Minister? The party should unite behind her as the Prime Minister. Should Julia Gillard sacked or be given over his comments yesterday? I haven't seen the comments of yesterday. Has I've been... This loyalty should never be condoned. Some people say that you are no longer in the Gillard camp and that you, you are a supporter of Kevin Ruddy. Are you, are you still a strong supporter of Julia Gillard? People say all sorts of things about me. I say to you, don't listen to them. Listen to what I say. And I don't know how many times I've said this. I'm sick of saying it. I said it only two days ago. Listen to what I say, not what other people say of me, about me. Judge me in terms of my commitment, my history, my preparedness to do what has always been important in terms of the calling for the unity within the party because that's the most effective way in which you can advance the interests of the country. I didn't come into politics to play politics. I came in to make changes, to actually make a difference. I don't spend my life in this game sitting around with scuttlebutt every night over coffee responding to newspaper leaks. I've got better things to do with my time, even if you don't. Minister Lean, if Kevin Rudd... ...that Julia Gillard nor Kevin Rudd can unify the party, so why wouldn't you be a good third option? Oh, I think because I haven't got the numbers and I'm honest enough to admit that. <laughs> have Kevin Rudd supporters approached you? ...circumstances being a candidate for leader. I have. have. I support the leader. I mean, how many times can I say it? Do I have to say it? I support the leader? Kevin Rudd approached you to run as his deputy in any leadership? No, he hasn't. I deny that. What would it mean for Labor if they switched to Kevin Rudd? I've said before, Fran, and I repeat again, our problem is not just about changing leaders or sticking with a leader. Our problem is, in my view, more fundamental. It's getting back to what the Labor Party not just stands for, but how it advances the interests of this nation. It's about the Labor Party not speculating about whether we're going to tax superannuation, but actually saying we're going to advance superannuation in this country because we've got a strategy to do it. And to rule out the argument of taxation on superannuation because that can easily be run as a scare campaign. 
I think that we've got to understand that the strength of the Labor Party in the past has been when it's been bold with its initiatives and moved forward, it's taken the nation forward. Maybe difficult issues to confront, but the nation has always respected that outcome. I think that the way in which the Labor Party has always operated most effectively is when it's been inclusive, when it's sought consensus, not when it's sought division, not when it's gone after class warfare. That's what the Labor Party has to get back to. That's the Labor Party I want us to return to. And that's a Labor Party that I want everyone to cohese behind. Have you spoken to Kevin Rudd personally about they, this? They can do it under whatever leader is prepared to stand up and say that. And I believe she can, but she must. But is it not have a reflection you, on the leader that she is not leading a united party? Well, no, I think the reflection on the fact that it's not uh, united is the fact that you guys get all the speculation about the, the numbers count. From your but, it is, but this is the time to stand up and lead. Today is a good day to demonstrate again uh, about that, that uh, common purpose. Um, we should get on with it. Have you spoken to Kevin Rudd about pulling back his troops? <sighs> no, I haven't spoken to him about pulling back the troops. My discussions with all of the colleagues, more fundamentally, uh, centre around policy, but I have said publicly, I don't need to say this again privately, I have said publicly that people have to pull back. They have to unify because it is killing us, in my view, um, the, the disunity. It's never been a good thing. I suffered it. I know what it means to go through it. So. It's got to end. Should Kevin Rudd tell his <coughs> troops to pull back? Because it seems at this point he's the only one that can perhaps stop this destabilisation. Well, he's said time and time again that he's not uh, challenging. You've got to ask his troops why they keep promoting it. Well, if Kevin Rudd's backers don't pull back, what can be done to, to nip this in the bud, to bring this issue to a head? <laughs> I don't... You know, in a sense... I'm not, too cert I'm, I'm not certain that I'd use your terminology. I would simply repeat what I've said. What can end it is that common purpose, that common set of values, the realisation that we face the public in six months' time, the fact that we've got a proud record, the fact that there are great things still to do. And I've talked of some of them um, here today. The other one is um, in, in terms of... Uh, a, a, a more sensible approach to how we finance our in infrastructure needs, other than through just calls on the government. I think, courtesy of superannuation, we have got this great pool of national savings. I think, collectively, we can build the nation. Collectively, if we work in partnership, we can achieve great things. That's what I want to be part of, and I want a Labor Party to lead it, because I think they've traditionally shown they are the best political party to lead that sort of thing. I'd like to see us discussing those issues moving forward in a unified way. Now, I, I'm not going to be distracted by the constant leader spe uh, leadership speculation, what it means for me or what I am interested in, what it means for the party and the country. It sounds as though you're disappointed, though, in some of the direction the Prime Minister has been taken. If there is a vote called on, no matter if you're involved in it or not, if there is, would you vote for Julie Gillard? Well, how is a vote being called on? I don't know. You well, there's not a vote. If there is a vote before the days is out, but asking you, me a hypo you are asking me a hypothetical, Fran. I don't. Well, I, I never answer hypotheticals. Why should I? So you're not guaranteeing your support in a vote for Julia Gillard. Why should I? Ask me a factual question. I will, all, I will always. I will Prime always Minister? answer the factual question directly. Are you disappointed in the leadership of the Prime Minister? I, I, no, I, I, I am of the view that there are certain decisions we could have handled better. Such as. I, I, I have those discussions internally and I will continue to have them. Media reforms is obviously one of them. Was this a complete shambles? No, I wouldn't describe it as that because I think the principles that it's seeking to achieve, the majority of the public would support. They want greater diversity in the media and they do want the opportunity through an independent body that if people have got complaints about the way in which the press reports, they can go to it. Would you disagree with that? It's not getting through. Though. You are in the media. Do you disagree with those two propositions? Well, I'm not, well, I'm I'm not, not voting though. on them, though. I'm asking you a direct question because you get the opportunity to ask me every time. But do you disagree with those two points? If the Prime because if you don't, 
have a look at what we are trying to do in the legislation. Now, if those two things can be achieved a better way, then give us positive advice. But don't typecast them as an attack on free speech. Don't ever say that the Labor Party is against free speech. Because one of that. I didn't say that. Well, I was the people, you, some of the people the that run your papers uh, the, and things do. I don't work for a paper, but the independents are voting. Well, you know the point. The independents are the ones that have to get this through the parliament. They've called it a shambolic process. I'm not the person you have to speak to. No, and the Prime Minister is obviously conducting those negotiations. I wish, you, I wish you well in that regard. Has Stephen Connery let down the Prime Minister in the handling of this matter? No, I think that the uh, I think that the process. I, I don't think it comes back so much to individuals. I think it comes back to the fact that we should have handled it and a better process. Sure, and but I've said run by individuals. I have said that before, Michelle. So that should come as um, no surprise. We always get we always get ourselves into trouble if we don't follow due process. I can remember when I was the leader of the Labor Party, we had very difficult issues to resolve. The Iraq war, which is, you know, 10 years ago, the, the celebration, well, not celebration of it, the Iraq war, the wars on, te the, the laws against terrorism, all the stuff that Howard was trying to put through. We had a seriously divided caucus, but I exhaustively encouraged the discussion and we got it right. And even though there was strong opposition within the party room to certain positions that I was advancing, people owned it in the end. And that's why the inclusive argument is so important. Politics is not just an announcement game. Politics is about process. It's about a, a process that frames the, the, process? frames the debate, the frames been? the debate properly. Where's the process been this week where it's a take it or leave it deal and it's been given till this afternoon? There's no process. There. Can I finish the answer to my question? Because I'm not interested in answering these questions anymore because I already have. But I'm saying to you that what we've got to move to is recognising that if we want good policy outcomes, there has to be consultation, there has to be a development of ownership and support and third party endorsement, there has to be at times a boldness in the decision making process, but a government that comes out collectively committed because it's gone through a process that has delivered the outcome. I've got no more to say, I'll leave you to it. Thank you.